The Demon Deacons of Wake Forest, 7-1-1 against ranked opponents, coming in here confident after an Elite Eight win over UC Santa Barbara. But guess what? Familiarity breeds contempt. Their rivals in the ACC, Virginia Cavaliers, who have won seven national champions, the opponent tonight. Welcome into the Men's College Cup NCAA 2019. Wake Forest getting set to take on the Virginia Cavaliers here at Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina. This is semifinal number two. As we look at the brackets, you will see Georgetown, emphatic win over Stanford. 2-0 winners, they lie in wait for Sunday's national championship game. It's either the Cavaliers or Demon Deacons. And welcome in everybody, I'm Glenn Davis. Alongside me, Devin Kerr, excited for semifinal number two here tonight. One thing we know about Virginia and Wake Forest, simply they are two teams that really put a high value on having the ball. Technically, the players are beyond impressive and the individual skill, their ability to play off of each other. What impresses me most is their ability to tactically break down other squads and that starts with the manager. But these two are probably the best in the nation when it comes to overall tactics. Sit back, you're gonna enjoy this one. Wake Forest has had some real good times under their coach, Bobby Muse. But what's missing? You know, he's gotten a lot of accolades. You can compile all the wins. Top 25 last 67 polls, 2015 preseason was the last time they weren't ranked and the 2016 national runoff that one really stung they felt like they were the best in the nation but they do not have a trophy on the mantle yet Bobby Muse is hoping that changes this year he's got a group that's got a lot of fight in them and it all starts with their dynamic forward Kyle Holcomb up top West Coast native and California dreaming about going to the final and why not with the way that he's been playing two goals in their matchup against Michigan and he's a guy who's just a thorn in the side to be honest he's frustrating to play against small in stature but he backs goal after goal and he does it in a multitude of ways they're gonna need a big tonight the University of Virginia under George Galvanach this is a team that loves to spread opponents out and they love to start the game from the back and play forward. Hard to pick out one player for UVA and they're beyond impressive and they'll spread you really thin and they can bypass the press. They pretty much do it all. So let's take a look at how they're capable of it. That's Mac Herman finalist, Joe Bell sitting in the midfield. Watch as he drops back here. As the center back, Red Hulls, he starts to play out. It's a really good job of rotation and then they're off and running. They break the first line of pressure, loads of space to work with, but there's a decision to be made. Do I want to push this ball down the middle and go to the left, go to the right? They're going to continue suit down into the corner. Donaciano is beautiful here. He challenges the back four. Notice one, two, three, four players from SMU caught running in the opposite direction. Two of them caught flat-footed. This is just stuff that is now off the training ground. Galnabach can ask for nothing simpler. You put it on a silver platter, back of the net. This is where UVA are at their finest. Two teams capable during the run of play. Two teams that know each other so well. It's Wake Forest, it's Virginia, it's Cary, North Carolina, and Wake Med Soccer Park. Starting lineups coming up next. Wake Forest fans are up for this one. This is the NCAA Men's College Cup in Cary, North Carolina. 49 degrees feels colder than that. Uh, Non-stop rain here, so that will affect the game here today. Wake Forest is in the black. Virginia will be in the white. Here is the 4-2-3-1 under Bobby Muse for the Demon Deacons. Pretty traditional in their ways, and you won't see a lot of rotation out of Calvin Harris on the left. What you want to look at are these two holding midfielders in the middle. Joey Desart coming back from picking up a little sickness. Isaiah Parente, he's the one in the middle that allows guys like Bruno Lapa go forward, get Kyle Holcomb involved in the run of form. Alistair Johnson, the right back, is beautiful. Let's go to UVA. This 4-3-3, we showed you Joe Bell, Daniel Steedman, Donaciano. Those three in the middle are the key to victory that allow the guys up top to have a little fun and allow the back four to be so solidified as they have all season long. Semifinal number two, Virginia in white, Wake in black. Soren Stoika is your referee. Game on and carry. Virginia, Wake Forest. What a way to cap the night here. Semifinal number two, Georgetown, the Hoyas, Lion Wait. Already booking their ticket to the national championship. DK tried to lay it down there to the very dangerous Nathaniel Crofts. 
right pressure coming here from Virginia now. It's away there by Brett Halsey. George Gelnovich, six College Cup appearances, has won two national titles, both of them here in Cary in 09 and 14. Former assistant to Bruce Arena, former under 18 national team coach. And we just saw Bruce Arena and Dave Sarakin here in the stadium. Story program of Virginia. Wake Forest as well. Tremendous history. He's got that long stride. Towards the end line. Squared back towards the penalty spot. Here's Wake Forest off the turn. Kicked away. And out by the very talented Henry Kessler, their center back. Good start for Wake Forest here. This is what they want. It initially starts from Eddie Foltz stepping in for Holland Rula at outside left back. And Rula actually picked up a knock in training. Eddie Foltz more than capable of getting the job done, but that's a key loss. Alvin Harris trying to get the, the cross in there. Let's take a look at uh, your keys to the game for Virginia, Devin. For whom the bell tolls, they've done it all season long. Let's follow Joe Bell to victory and beyond. He is a guy who continues to pile up all the accolades. New Zealand Youth International actually had two friendly repetitions for the senior squad. He connects everything. The back four, the boys up top. If he is not present, they have a problem. But they haven't had that issue all season long. Also make sure that you take a look at what they're able to do once they step forward. You want to work from the outside in, stretch that back line with the top three because Donis and Daniel Steedman will continue to step forward and really provide key support to the attack. The player to keep an eye on is Daryl DK, a big, towering, muscular center forward wearing number nine for Virginia. Uh, he's actually turned into more of a creator here in the NCAA playoffs, pulling out on the right at times, but Draws penalties, can hold play up. He's a real challenge. Kessler called for the foul there on the checking back Kyle Holcomb, who we featured in our open. Let's take a look at the Wake Forest keys to the game here. Patience is a virtue, and they're so good offensively, but their ability to maintain that shape defensively is where they've struggled a little bit. When they go forward, that's where you step on the next point. They have to do it together. That's the offensive defending. When one goes, you all have to go. That's got to be a full collective 11 effort, and the tempo of UVA is, is the key factor for me here for Wake Forest. Once this game starts to open up a little bit, can you chase both directions? Because they're not all fleet of foot. Nassiano thought he was fouled, and Wake ends up earning the free kick. Michael DeShields on the ball now. Splitting two, knocks it into midfield. Calvin Harris. Again, we mentioned two teams that love to have the ball. Here's Chulba. Chul Chul was born in Sudan. Four goals and eight assists from Tucker, Georgia. And there is the very talented Bruno Lapa. Lapa now. Big switch of play. Joel the target. Headed to wary there by Afamai Funa. Joel. Towards the end line, overhead. Oh, he had a runner getting in there and just uh, weighted the pass too heavily out for the goal kick. Bobby Muse, 43 years of age, arrived at Wake five years ago in 2015 was an assistant at Wake, then went and helped develop the program for seven years at Denver. And I remember he took over for Jay Vidovich, who's now at Pitt. Vidovich uh, helping Wake Forest win a national championship. Bobby Muse, 12-4 in NCAA tournament play. That's nothing to sneeze at. It's pretty quality, but I can promise you this. He'd trade any of those wins for just one more in terms of at the College Cup. Just been lacking that finishing touch a little bit, and it's not for lack of talent. Sometimes you have to go through the waxes and wanes in order to get all these positive accolades at the tail end of it, and they've just been missing that out. But again, he feels like he's got a special group, and talent-wise, these guys grind a bit more. They've got that grit to dig down deep, and we've seen that time and time again over the course of the 2019 campaign. Joey Desson caught in possession. Good work there from Calvin Harris, the freshman from... Middlesbrough, England right now. He'll switch it to Alistair Johnston. And that dribbling, mazy run. 
That was the lone goal against Santa Barbara in the first half, right in the stroke of halftime. And Santa Barbara was a very, very good team that pretty much owned that game for the first 25 minutes. But then slowly Wake grew into that game. That was in the Elite Eight. Virginia got a real test from SMU, another good squad. 3-2 win in that one. They had to go to overtime. Bell from the penalty spot. You and I were talking about that, Glenn. You watched the opening 20, 25 minutes of that match, and the press coming out of SMU was absolutely unstoppable. Big space here for Lapa now. He's going to try and took a deflection. And good work with his feet there from Colin Shuttler, who tracked his feet, a very vital part of helping build the game up for Virginia. A couple teams around this tournament that are going to feel a bit hard done by the way results came out. SMU, one of them, and that press we just talked about, University of Virginia, able to bypass it and finally make their amends on the offensive side of the ball. How about Clemson and, and what they went up against in the game against Stanford Cardinal and how they just look like they unstoppable all season long. They go out and get a goal, and once again, Stanford finds a way. They fell up short in the semifinal against Georgetown, but, you know, this just... The room for error is so small at this stage, and especially this time of year, that when you are gifted an opportunity, you gotta go out and make the most of it. Both of these teams have done that and more. We saw Clemson's Mike Noonan in attendance here tonight. Rush, rush! Wake Forest is elected to try and make a stand higher up the field here against Virginia. It's a big win here. A very important area of the field. Croft's trying to tiptoe his way through a few defenders. Six goals, three assists on the year for him. This is Andreas Uhland, freshman from Norway. Bell. Ping that one out wide. Just such a vast array of passing skills from Joe Bell, but uh, we have to talk uh, about college intelligentsia in midfield. It's him. Good switch of play. This is the man you want on the ball. Lapa now. Swings it out wide. Calvin Harris can't control. Parente switches it. Kyle Holcomb. <laughs> Blooded into the tackle there. Goes Robin Afamafuna. Dallas Johnston. He'll try to get forward on the right side. Today for Wake Forest. Very well coached programs, well drilled. <laughs> Calvin Harris. <laughs> Joey Desar came back. Against UC Santa Barbara, such a big piece in that holding role for Wake today. Here he is on the ball now. Rain continuing to fall here in Cary, North Carolina. It's going to be a Wake corner here. After that pressure from Cho. Lovely pressure on the far side by Machop Cho. And there's already an interesting little movement coming up over there on the right between he and Kyle Holcomb. They're switching already, asking a lot out of the back for UVA. Lapa's ball comes into the box out for the goal kick for the Cavaliers of Virginia. Tomorrow afternoon on ESPN, the ESPN app, we've got a great men's college basketball doubleheader. It'll start with a bitter rivalry between Penny Hardaway's 13th ranked Memphis Tigers, Rick Barnes' 19th ranked Tennessee Vols in Knoxville. That's three Eastern, then John Calipari, number eight Kentucky, taking on Georgia Tech at the famed Rupp Arena in Lexington. Brett Halsey will switch it. Converted to a right back. 
Joey Desart. Come on, Steve! Here's Desart now. Boy, the timing of him coming back perfectly. Really stepping in there beautifully. Off of Mafona. So how quickly Desart tried to switch the point of attack there. Joey Desart, one of the pieces that is pretty much a mainstay in the midfield all season long. Unfortunately, going into that matchup against the Michigan Wolverines, he came a bit ill, and they just had to keep an eye on him limit the expectations and just really hope they could continue on all of his boys said you know what we want to make sure that this is not his last college game as he was on the bench and I mean you talked about that he said this is a guy who is so talented surprised he hasn't gotten more calls coming out of Philadelphia Union organization as a homegrown player Jackson New Jersey the good thing is uh, this art coming back against UC Santa Barbara and got some very important minutes uh, not only to help him advance here to the College Cup, but also sharpen himself up here for this match against Virginia. Hewlett. Brett Halsey pushing real high up the field here on the right side, the right back for Virginia. Hewitt, the freshman. He's all the way back to Bell now. Bell with a switch of play here. Henry Kessler, part of that wonderful spine that's Kessler, Bell, and DK for George Gelovach in Virginia. I just want to keep an eye on this right now, Glenn, where Wake Forest playing that high line that you just mentioned. It's gone very much man-to-man, -man. so when University of Virginia starts to rotate back around, Joe Bell is so deep, they don't have a presence in the middle of the field right now. You've got Donaciano and Daniel Steedman. Holcomb goes down in the box. It's going to be a corner. How about this tackle? Andreas Eulen coming all the way over from the right side. Henry Kessler had stepped up, expecting the rotation to come to him. Then Wake Forest starts to counter, gets in from behind, and the touch is brilliant. There's the tiniest of touches, and Wake Forest actually gets out in front. Off the cross here, trying to hit that off the full volley there was Wake Forest. Two teams that look really up for the moment here tonight. Wait now. Holcomb trying to hit the near post. Eulen got there first. Good pressure here from Wake Forest now. Here's Holcomb, and this will be easily into the hands of Colin Shuttler. At three saves against SMU in the Elite Eight. 15 shutouts, a remarkable. 0.40 goals against average. We have four teams that, from the standpoint of collective defending, excellent here in Perry, North Carolina. Add insult to injury for the, for the family ties. His older brother's sitting on the bench watching him, one of the transfers coming over, and a guy that's just so good in between the pipes. He's gonna have his work cut out for him tonight. Bruno Lapa already very active in the middle. Machope Choi on the far side, and Calvin Harris is playing an interesting role so far. Actually tucking himself into the interior a bit more, starting to explore to try and counter this game going the other direction. Here's Harris being pushed back. Michael DeShields. Eddie Folds. As mentioned, getting the start for Paul Rue. Lapa. Calvin Harris. Going to be a free kick here. In a nice area for Wake Forest now. Glenn, notice where this comes from. This actually comes from number three, Kyle Holcomb. Their big guy up top, they're trying to feed every time he comes out and Calvin Harris goes inside. That's exactly what I was just talking about, challenging the University of Virginia with the overlapping runs. That's got to be Donaciano and Nathaniel Crofts better in communication when they start to counteract going inside and out. 
Bruno Lapa with nine goals, three assists. The senior from Brazil stands over this. The Wake Forest. Can he get this up and over the wall? It took a deflection off the wall. Tremendous reaction save here to prevent Wake from going up. You can't ask for anything else. It actually gets a little deflection coming off the wall. They did their job for sure. Everybody stands fast. And Shuttler's still able to slide over and push it up over the bar. Wake Forest towards the near post. Be another corner now for the Demon Deacons. 16-4-2 for Wake on the year. 6-2 in the ACC. They are the number four seed in their sixth college cup. Towards the far post. Oh, it went over everybody. Holcomb was there, but won't get there. Out for the goal kick for Virginia now. Coming off that set piece opportunity, Glenn. It's already difficult enough for Colin Shuttler. He's got five guys in his own white jersey standing in front of him. And he's going to use that to his advantage. He's got to account for the upper 90 on his left-hand side, but still trust that his wall's going to do his job. And when he rotates back over, this thing's headed for the back of the net, if not for the deflection. And you would think that's a positive coming off the deflection, right? No. He's now got to reach back across his body, and he does it with his right arm. Gets just enough power behind it to push it up over the bar. That's one of the better saves you'll see from a set piece. Here's the way Virginia loves to play, trying to spread the game out here. Trying to break pressure. Here's DK now. They have done it. DK now. It's not off it. And DK is going to get caught for the foul. Free kick Wake Forest. Surprised he didn't pick that ball up and take somebody out. Seemed like he wanted to draw the foul first and foremost. First one, that's a foul. The shoulder's in behind. You can see him hit the numbers the entire way. You want a 50-50 shoulder charge. you got to come square. And you can see the way the challenge comes in. Arms overextended. They get away with one a little bit, Wake Forest, and then retaliation almost certainly coming after the no call by the referee. DK has drawn a lot of penalties for Virginia. He loves to pull out into that area where, where we just saw him get the ball. He has uh, provided some assists from there. Actually, in the NCAA tournament, turned into more of a creator, it seems, Devin. You can allow him to do that even with his ability to hit the back of the net because of all of the pieces that they possess. Resort wins it back. He's going to try to initiate this attack. No call here for Stoika. And it's Shuttler now. Named the first team All-American. In fact, we have 10 spread amongst the four teams here at the NCAA College Cup. against St. John's in the tournament. Here's DK. Will he hit this? Yes, he will! Yeah! What a goal from Daryl DK! Not only will he hit it, he hit it with no regard for humanity. What a blast, and Virginia is up. You said it last time, you were surprised he didn't go one-on-one -on -one and take on someone down in the corner before the referee blows the foul. Watch this when he spins off the shoulder. That goal against SMU, he elects to play this square across. This time it's one-on-one, -on -one, and from the tiniest of angles, is able to slip this one past Pannenberg. Goalkeeper has to do better, to be honest. It's such a small angle. When you shift over to your left-hand side, even though DK gets that amount of force behind it, you are put back there for a reason. Pennenberg has to put one of those big mitts on it and make a save. Daryl DK in the 19th minute. His brother Bright played for the Portland Timbers in Major League Soccer. Eighth of the year for him. And more importantly, his first in the NCAA tournament. Coming at a good time here. Would you call that against the run of play? Has to be. The amount of space that's open, the quick transitional ball, and 
But I mean, based on the overall game tonight, was that against the run of play for you? Definitely not. The way that University of Virginia has built themselves into it, I give the advantage to Wake Forest five, six, seven minutes. But since then, though they haven't necessarily progressed far into the final third, they've been controlling most of the tempo. The horizontal play was something Bobby Muse talked to us about. He said, we'll let them go side to side. We're not going to jump the gun because we know they can play in behind us. They just got bit by it. Number eight for DK, Edmond, Oklahoma. He's only a sophomore. Power, strength, draws fouls, direct option, and can create as well as score goals. Shutler calls off those two center backs. Here's a serious history between Wake and Virginia. This is a 59th meeting. But look at the bottom there. Demon Deacons, 0 16 and 5 against the Virginia Cavaliers in ACC tournament play and NCAA tournament play. When we saw that statistic, we were not sure that was correct. That is stunning to me. I went straight to the producer. I said, You got this wrong. <laughs> that cannot be right, but it just goes to show you that no matter what they've been able to do over the course of the years, there are some teams that are just the kryptonite, and this is one of them, right? You come out, you make a statement early on, you feel like you're taking the reins of this game, and then immediately, Galavach's boys have come right back at you, and they've done it in ridiculous fashion as well. It's a Wake Forest team that likes to get out in front. They like to stay out in front under Bobby Muse and give you an idea of how successful they are. When they score first, all bets are off. They are 78-0-4. But when they concede, especially this year, they have only come back to win once. They're 1-4. That's the 2019 season that shows you that, okay, yeah, they've got some fight and some grit, and I respect that from Bobby Muse. But statistics tell a different story. As he's fouled, it'll be a free kick, Virginia. This is a 19th minute goal. Daryl DK as Bobby Muse looks on. Then earlier this year, November 13th, Virginia winning in Charlotte, Nathaniel Cross getting a goal in that one. In that game, Wake Forest was limited to one shot. Virginia again on the attack. It's going to deflect out. It should be a corner. It is for the Cavaliers here now who are buoyed by getting the game's opening goal. That man right there, one of my more favorite players to watch within the squad, respectfully to everybody else on the pitch. Donaciano, the junior out of Roanoke, Virginia. He'll go after it. When DK starts to stretch out like we saw on the goal, he'll tuck himself back inside of it and become the number nine for them. And that's a good look where he'll go one-on-one -on -one with any of them. Good targets here, he lives in there as well. Oh, it's too low. It's another for DK. Glancing header to the far post. Virginia on a roll here in the first half. They did it with set pieces against St. John's. They've done it for a second goal here. Watch the rotation of bodies. He's standing right in front of Pannenberg, and everybody's worried about the big body. You've got Euland on the back post as he starts to step in, but they don't account for the one who has been instrumental all season long. No, he hasn't been able to do it in the postseason, but look at DK, just drifts back out, the one-on-one -on -one marking. You gotta put a forearm on a guy like this. Eat it alive, just keep stirring the pot, my friend. You are having some sort of 25-minute opening to this game. Ninth of the year for DK. Going towards the corner, being taken by Virginia. Glenn noticed too, whether it's an open play or in set piece opportunities, they look to him for the focal point to play off of him, but the minute that they get other bodies up there, they just spin him off just like they did on the goal and allow him to make a positive decision. He's done that two times in a row. Of the season and second of the match. The assist to number seven, Daniel Steedman. Steedman with the delivery. He'll take a lot of the set pieces if not all of them tonight. The delivery was wonderful too. We didn't accent that Virginia, as much nine, as maybe we should have. Tremendous delivery from Daniel Steedman. And he's going to stand over Virginia another free two. kick here. Wake Forest, nothing. Well, this is a derby moment for Wake Forest here because they're down a pair. 
and having to defend another set piece against all these big targets for Virginia. It's not an element of the game where Virginia has any sort of weakness, really. Whipping through everybody and cleared for another quarter or not. No, out for the goal kick now. Tomorrow, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, the ESPN app. We'll have the 85th annual Heisman Trophy ceremony from New York City. Will it be LSU's Joe Burrow, Oklahoma's Jalen Hurts, Ohio State's Justin Fields, or his teammate Chase Young? Heisman Trophy ceremony, by the way, presented by Nissan. And the Mac Herman Trophy finalists, Joe Bell, Dylan Nealis, and Robbie Robinson. DK again trying to get turned. And he's going to get called for the foul here on Michael DeShields. Redshirt Jr. out of Baltimore. You got a favorite in either one of those awards? Oh, tough one. I, I like I like Joe Bell. I, yeah. I really do. I just I, I like the uniqueness of the way he plays the game, the, the use of his brain. And I would say Dylan Nielsen, Nielis is the same way. The performance. Very he, cerebral type players. Yeah, the performance he put in tonight was outstanding in the first matchup against Stanford. A guy that's such a dynamic two-way outside back had the understanding that, you know, maybe he had to sit home a bit more and he executed fully. I, I was really impressed with his ability to sit home and just allow the pressure to come at him. He won so many battles one-on-one -on -one or transitional play. He did great. Let's give a good shout out to Robbie Robinson too because a very, very sophisticated razor sharp striker for Clemson. DK had a two goal game and a 3 0 win over St. Louis on October 22nd. And he's got two here in 23 minutes tonight. His next goal has to come from Wake Forest, you would say. Virginia's record here in Cary, North Carolina. It's a nice place for them. Two titles, four ACC titles. The last title here, and that ball stops here. DK's gonna get there. Nearly problematic there for Andrew Pannenberg in goal. Glenn, we saw an issue with the field in the first matchup on the opening goal by Georgetown down in the corner where the ball basically stopped, allowing them to continue play where they would find Zawadzki at the top of the box. And the same thing rings true here where it just stops right in front of Pannenberg. And as a goalkeeper and a defender, you have to understand your surroundings. Go and check those out. Wait now on the attack. No whip of the ball to their post. Cleared by Kessler. Take a look at those highlights from the Georgetown win over Stanford here at halftime. Ticking down towards 18 minutes left here in the first half. Daryl DK with a pair of goals. And Virginia 2-0 lead. <laughs> Lapa could control. And they will need the Brazilian Wake Forest to help them get back into this game. Non-stop rain here. The entire day in Cary, North Carolina. Parente. Coming inside again, Calvin Harris. This is over hit, bit straight there, goes out for the goal kick for Virginia. With that substitution, Glenn, that's Bobby Muse trying to get his star forward, Kyle Holcomb, just on the same page tactically up top. He's a bit of lost in translation right now. What Bruno Lapa is doing is he's starting to step up and creating a two-headed monster up top. You're seeing that right now as they shift right and left with David Rona. And Kyle Holcomb just wasn't getting that. It became very much a one-off scenario where UVA just started to bypass this press. And you can start to see it right now. It's an angles game that they're allowing them to play out of. If one of them comes out of the middle 
and you start to bypass itself. That's exactly what Bobby Muse does not want, and he talked to us about that. They have to be better. It's just lacking in execution. The idea is there, but transitional play just has to be smarter because they're not getting this side-to-side -side movement. Uland. It's always difficult to get the ball back from Virginia. As Shuttler just puts a foot on it. Baseball there from Desart. Papa could have turned. Desart now. He's got to fight to win it back here. Harris. Quick turn there from Harris. Took a little bit of a hit from Kessler. They're going to get a free kick here. And maybe an entree way back into this game. This is a bit light from the referee with the challenge coming by Henry Kessler. I love the spin by Calvin Harris. That's the movement that I'd really like to see more out of coming off of this left-hand side. Number 22 spinning in every time that he's come in. They've turned this UVA offense inside out. And defensively, it's created this ridiculous shape that they've struggled to deal with. Unalapa going up top. That's opening up space for you. So who comes underneath? Calvin Harris has answered that question. They just haven't fed that beast enough. Well, just kind of overloading that little pocket of space in front of a back four. So Bruno Lapa's going to get another chance here. A little bit farther out. Takes something special here. Blocked by the wall. Lapa to Harris. Lapa folds. The shields. One jumped off the foot of Rona. Gonna be a free kick. Virginia Roan is only a freshman from Hoover, Alabama. Columbus Crew Academy. 15th appearance for him for Wake Forest as a freshman. There's the direct ball that is always an option to DK. And he's gonna earn a free kick here. Seeing what you've seen in the past game, that'll have been relayed to you by your coaching staff if you're on the University of Virginia. And then in the opening 25 minutes, this is a distance that's a gray area. You're centered based upon where the goal is at right now. You're about 35, 38 yards out. I'm hitting this. If I'm Daniel Steedman, I'm putting it right on frame, and I'm going after Andrew Pannenberg. He's struggled with the ground a little bit right now. You don't need to put it in the back of the net. Just give yourself an opportunity to challenge the goalkeeper. Steedman. And he will try it. And it balloons into the crowd out for the goal kick. Vital piece of Virginia, two goals, six assists, a sophomore from Glasgow, Scotland. Wonderful set piece off the corner to set up the second goal to Daryl DK. Parente. Kessler who went down. Quick throw in from Wake Forest. Coming away from the skirmish in the corner was Joe Bell. You hear the crunching of these tackles now. With Gelvinach, 54 years of age, two titles in 09 and 2014. Really adapted uh, in a number of ways as a coach because that team that won it in 2014 over UCLA, that was just defending deep. Won that on penalties. This is a completely different type of soccer team than that team that won the national championship, and I'm not taking anything away from them. Shields, Eddie Folds now. Calvin Harris. Calvin Harris's father played for Sheffield United. Gotta love uh, what they're doing in the Premier League now, coming up from the championship. 
he's actually stepped into the coaching ranks now. He's now the head coach of Dagenham and Redbridge. Trying to get forward down that right side was Johnson, the senior from Canada. Had that wonderful dribbling, amazing run to get the game winner against UC Santa Barbara. If you're wondering who Dagenham and Redbridge, people are sitting at home going, how is that relevant? Well. You've probably heard of a guy by the name of Tim Howard. He's a pretty good goalkeeper for the United States men's national team and elsewhere over in England. Well, his ownership group, that is with Memphis 901 FC, actually purchased stake and are now the controlling interest tagging him in Redbridge. So this game coming full circle. It's always six degrees of separation. Big game Manchester United players purchasing and becoming owners of Salford United in England as well. Uh, there's a lot of examples of that now going on. Here's DK. Steedman trying to fight his way through. Game's got a little bit chaotic now. So Virginia's going to want to calm things down here. Shuttler's going to concede the throw. Sales of ponchos in the Cary, North Carolina area have shot through the roof here today. I bought stock before we walked in the building. I saw it coming, literally. <laughs> the rain was on the wall, and the credit to the fans. This crowd has only gotten bigger as the night's gone on. This is a hearty group of fans here. Henry Kessler now carries it for so important to the build-up for Virginia. Famafuna. How about that from Kessler? Goes to ground, wins it right back, kills off the transition play from Wake Forest, and here's Virginia now. Calvin Harris has won it back. Foles, the Shields, Harris, pressure from Virginia. One thing that can break pressure is the individual. And that's exactly what Calvin Harris does. Harris. Bouncing back up. Is Rona. Ticking down towards eight minutes left in the first half here. Look at the attack of Wake Forest there in the numbers. Very rarely do we see any Bobby Muse's squad shut out. Just right now, they're off kilter a little bit. You know, this is a conversation at halftime where you got to start from ground zero. You know, hit the reset button and say boys you know we trained all year long and we didn't train to come out and look like this dk now virginia now trying to build it up donaciano knocked it back he's just such a big piece to this midfield sometimes drops in a little deeper where bell is he's going to earn a free kick here but also can join in the attack here's bell Hewlett. Nice little touch there from Halsey. Pannenberg and goal for Wake Forest at four saves against UC Santa Barbara. Huge save on Candida in that game. Let's get this go! Go! Channel Henry, channel, channel, channel Henry. Shuttler 
tally up uh, who's got some of the most touches in the first half. Shuttler's had a bunch of them, just to remind you that he's essentially used as a field player by George Gelnovach. They're down for Wake Forest. Slow to get up. It's Rona who's struggling here a little bit. better start pulling more fans. Don't please. Don't please. Coverage of the NCAA championships continue with Men's College Cup this Sunday, December 15th, 6 Eastern on ESPNU. For more information on the NCAA Men's College Cup, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home of all 90 NCAA championships. Georgetown awaiting the winner of Wake in Virginia. It's a 19th minute goal. From Daryl DK, a 23rd minute goal from Daryl DK. It's a 2 0 Virginia lead here. The emphatic nature of that first goal was that a bit of a stunner for Wake, you think? Uh, we, we've seen opening goals from teams today that really had a lot of wow factor to them as well. Very motivating, kind of energizing type goals. That combined with the adjustments coming out of University of Virginia, which I actually will go with the latter, to be honest. No disrespect to Wake. They started quickly, but since then, it's the individual movements that you're starting to see right now. DK has rolled the defender here in a great recovery from Nico Benalcazar, because at one moment there, we thought he was beaten and left for dead there. Ends up getting the tackle, but he can roll defenders. Look at that left arm. This is exactly what I'm talking about, though, because Brett Halsey's really high. You've actually got Denaciano that's gone to the other side. And just look at this piece of a body up top. You said to him, he is so large in stature, and he knocks everybody off the ball. But that was the first time you see Daniel Steedman coming to the near side, switching things up. Corners hung up here. Oh, oh, back across the face of goal. Did not go out. It's still Virginia. Crofts works a one-two. Crofts, who is tricky, gets the cross and punched out. I would have thought Pannenberg might have been able to hold that, but it's still Virginia now. Bell. Joe Bell knocks it back to maintain possession here. That's why. He's made one of the three finalists for the Mac Herman Award, by the way. Because you think they're down in the corner. Okay, he's just going to whip this in the box. He recognizes they don't have the right numbers. So he pulls it back and starts over. Lapa now has got some real space here. Virginia's out of shape here and hesitates. And look who comes back to win the ball is Joe Bell. Lapa hesitating there dramatically, killing off that attack for Wake Forest. Lapa to me tonight so far does not look sharp, Devin. Not at all, and there's appreciation by Henry Kessler to Joe Bell just a second ago as Gunnarsson's down in the corner, and it's the decision-making, it's the rotation of movements, it's the space that's there and not there. They're just off, and this is where you have to have a pretty detailed conversation, which is not going to bode well for Bobby Muse at halftime. Down two goals against the University of Virginia team. The last matchup we asked him, I said, what went wrong? He goes, plain and simple. We didn't play well, but most importantly, it took us 45 minutes to get going. Same is ringing true right now. Joel, he's a guy that can uh, maybe turn things around. It'll be a throw in for Wake Forest. Joel continuing to battle away over there with Afamafuna. Now look at this, Bruno Lapa's gonna go out here now with under three minutes left here in the first half. Coming in is Omar Hernandez, freshman from Georgia. DK also coming out for Virginia. Yes, set! Oh, 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 Welcome number 15, Philip Horton. Go, 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 go
15, Horton for the Cavaliers. Calvin Harris is going to try to get there. Coming up at halftime, the NCAA National Semifinal Preview, or actually the final preview, ESPN. We'll look back at that game uh, earlier today between Georgetown and Stanford. ESPN team visits uh, the Pediatric Cancer Hospital in DK's Brace. Free kick Virginia now. One minute remaining in the half. Joe Bell stepping up to this free kick. Very positive first 45 minutes for Virginia. They're going to go use the space behind them back to their goalkeeper Colin Shuttler quick throwing yeah, both benches very emotional on the far side of the field for Virginia and Wake Forest Mission accomplished here in the first 45 minutes for George Gelnovach in Virginia. Two goals from Daryl DK. Your thoughts in the first 45, Devin? Wake Forest has got a problem, and they don't have a presence in the number nine up top. Machop Chol on the right-hand side struggling. I liked what I've seen out of Calvin Harris, but they also don't have a number 10. Bobby Muse has a lot at his disposal. He just needs to get his boys a bit more motivated in the second 45 minutes. UVA? Wash, rinse, repeat. Do the exact same thing. Really like what I saw to them in the first half. Let's go down to the head coach of Wake Forest, Bobby Muse. Bobby, how do you get back in this one tonight? Uh, I, I don't. Uh, I really don't know what to say right now. I thought we start really well. Um, big ball got in behind us, and then we, get, we got a little scared, I think, with the big ball. And uh, uh, second ball. I, I, for me, this game's not over. I think... I think we're a little bit unlucky not to have a penalty, and the game changed a little bit. We'll go in the locker room, try to step up our press and disrupt them a little bit more and see if we can get one back here in the first 10 minutes of the second half. Coach, we saw a pretty decent amount of work off Calvin Harris on the left-hand side, some of the cutting in and maybe just the rotation in behind him. Was that something you guys had drawn up ahead of time, or did he pick that up on his own? No, there's tons of space in the channels for our wingers to come inside and get on the turn, and we'll work on that a little bit more. But... Uh, the guys played football. I, I wasn't happy we can't play balls back in that wet surface. And I think we need a little help from the guy in the middle as well. Bobby, thank you very much for your time. Best of luck in the second half. Thanks. Bobby Muse, coach of Wake Forest. A lot of work for the Demon Deacons to do. Down a pair of goals to Virginia. Stay with us. Coming up, we'll preview. Take a look at the first semifinal. Cavaliers here with a 2-0 lead over Wake Forest here. The NCAA Men's College Cup semifinal number two. Let's go down to the head coach of Virginia, George Gelnovich. George, thank you very much. A great first 45 minutes for you. What would you tell your team in the locker room here at halftime? Well, we gotta, we got to be careful of this half in particular coming, coming, out, coming out of the goal. It's muddy. You can see the ball stopping. You can see that in the first game. So we're going to have to change things a little bit. Coming from our goalkeeper, we're not going to be rolling it out and passing it out as much. Coach, seemed like the opening 10 minutes, Wake Forest was a bit hotter. They were rotating the ball nicely, and the guys were a bit rattled. But then immediately, the man marking, zonal passing, communication was much better. Was that direction coming from the sideline, or was that the boys picking that up on their own? Yeah, li listen, last time we played Wake, we, we came with that intensity and caught them off guard a little bit, and I think they did the same to us in the first 10 minutes. But uh, as the half went on, I think we wore them out coming out of our half. Their 9 position, their 10 position, both 7-11 positions where we're starting to get tired as the half went on. And as they stepped up, we, we caught them with one ball over the top with a great finish by Daryl. Tell us a little bit about Daryl and, and the options he brings to your team, George. I mean, I think you saw what he brings in the first half. Uh, yeah. 
He's, uh, he's been pretty good with his back to the goal. Uh, he's also fast and mobile for a guy his size, so balls over the top are dangerous. You saw his finish on the first goal, and uh, on the second goal, he's a handful on restarts. George, thank you very much for your time. Best of luck in the thank second you. half. All right, George Gelnovich has won two national titles here, trying to get Virginia into a third final here. Welcome back to Cary, North Carolina. Virginia Cavaliers here with a 2-0 lead over Wake Forest here. The NCAA Men's College Cup semifinal number two. Let's go down to the head coach of Virginia, George Gelnovich. George, thank you very much. Uh, great first 45 minutes for you. What would you tell your team in the locker room here at halftime? Well, we gotta, we got to be careful of this half in particular coming, coming out coming out of the goal it's muddy you can see the ball stopping you can see that in the first game so we're going to have to change things a little bit coming from our goalkeeper we're not going to be rolling it out and passing it out as much coach seemed like the opening 10 minutes wake forest was a bit hotter they were rotating the ball nicely and the guys were a bit rattled but then immediately the man marking zonal passing communication was much better was that direction coming from the sideline or was that the boys picking that up on their own yeah li listen last time we played wake we we came with that intensity and caught them off guard a little bit and i think they did the same to us in the first 10 minutes but uh, as the half went on i think we wore them out coming out of our half their nine position their 10 position both 7 11 position where we're starting to get tired as the half went on and as they stepped up we, we caught them with one ball over the top with a great finish by Daryl. Tell us a little bit about Daryl and, and the options he brings to your team, George. And I think you saw what he brings in the first half. Uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's been pretty good with his back to the goal. Uh, he's also fast and mobile for a guy his size, so balls over the top are dangerous. You saw his finish on the first goal, and uh, on the second goal, he's a handful on restarts. George, thank you very much for your time. Best of luck in the thank second you. half. Shot by Bruno Lapa there, and handled there by Colin Shuttler. So you heard George Gulnovich basically say, look, we don't want a lot of back passes now on this very heavy, soggy end of the field here. So I'm going to put you, uh, Devin, in the shoes of Bobby Muse. How does Wake get back into this? You got to start with the playmakers, right? Bruno Lapa, we alluded to the fact that their star number 10 basically disappeared so much so that Bobby Muse took him off the field. And that's one of the chats that you're going to have to. Alistair Johnson at the right back position was almost null and void in terms of his attacking options going forward. Now you have to give credit to the outside midfielders of the University of Virginia, but the space is there. They just didn't execute. There's Calvin Harris. Maybe he's the way back into that heavy, heavy, thick water in that one corner i'm really looking at the midfield three though you saw pretty good movement out of calvin harris which i'm told you can lose one side of the field and still have the balance on the other isaiah parenti is one of my most impressive players watching them into the build-up for this season and for this cup run why isn't he on the ball more? He, Joey Desart in the middle of the field, they got to find a way to dictate their own terms to this Cavalier squad because they were chasing too much in the opening 45 minutes, letting the University of Virginia not only go side to side, but stretch them thin. They said they didn't want to overexpose themselves, and yet time and time again, they put themselves in really bad positions. Alistair Johnson, Calvin Harris trying to get turned. Well, to be honest with you, I would simply just say from the attacking standpoint of players needing to produce here today, really, it's pretty much Calvin Harris who's lived up to the moment here. They took Kyle Holcomb off, and, you know, the question is, Glenn, is if you take Bruno Lapa and push him up, and I don't mind that look. If you're going to press, you have to have a repress. So if he goes, everybody else behind him has to go. And while you and I are standing here watching, that's been the issue. There's a front line of three or four guys. But you being in the coach's shoes on the sideline, you're smart enough to look and see Joey Desart's got to go. There's got to be four, five, six. It can't be these individual efforts because University of Virginia has just been picking them apart. Yeah, you need more from Chong. You need more from Holcomb. You need more from Lapa. If you want to get yourself back into this. Kessler. Shuttler getting way outside his 18 to get away from that heavy water that's in certain parts of his box. Desart to Shields. 
Can't find the feet of Harris. Lake Forest looking for some sort of inspiration. Range is continuing to pound down here. Sheets. Harris. Bell steps in, draws the foul. Some of the stuff that I'm talking about, though. Wake Forest finally takes possession of the ball. You go to build out. Lapa was actually already going the other direction. He's expecting the ball over him. So when he checks back, Joe Bell has already stepped in front of him. That's their six holding midfielder just being smart, high soccer IQ reading the game. Just gets in front of the attacking midfielder and they get a foul out of it. Joel heads it away. Shot is blocked there. From long range was Brett Halsey. Of course, Wake Forest has had injuries to two very important players, Justin McMaster and Aristotle Zaris, which has changed the complexion of things a bit. Do you remember what Bobby Muse said to us, though? When asked about that, he said, at no point in time have we put our heads down, have we complained. He said, it's very much been the next man up. He looks down the bench, the guys get up and they go. They don't dwell about it because they understand they got a job to do. And that's how they've been able to get here, but you know, Glenn, looking at everything, that's some of my concern that I have right now, where even the guys that he's looked to on the bench, they haven't done anything, right? The energy is lacking. And Alcazar. Johnston, to your point, Johnston has not provided any width up and down the right side here, really, in this game. For Wake Forest. It's a good entry ball, but not able to control it was Kyle Holcomb. Maybe just hold it there without trying to turn. Spot on. He could have spun back in the inside or just, just held and waited for Chol to spin off of him and instead goes the wrong direction. And, you know, sometimes there's no magic in the cards. We're starting to see that right now. It's seven minutes into the second half, you would think it would be fresh. New ideas being pumped out from the manager on the sideline, but unfortunately, it's much of the same of what we saw in the opening 45 minutes. Harris couldn't control it. Bell fighting through it now. Sweeping tackle there from Eddie Folds for Wake Forest. DK would have been off and running, but called for the foul there. The two arms on the shields. Harris, Joel, cuts inside, left footed shot, good hit there. And good clean handling there from Colin Shuttler, but maybe that's something now to build off of for Wake Forest. This is much better rotation as he cuts back inside. Kyle Holcomb had actually already rotated back around, but by pulling himself to the back post, that opens up all the space at the top of the 18, and it's really well read by the outside midfielder. Don't you just love wide men that can come inside and then also stretch things out towards the sideline and try and penetrate toward an end line. So the defender drove me nuts. <laughs> Always having to account for that, that next to runner, but you know, that's the, the building block that Wake Forest is looking for right now. Here's Cho now, sweeping tackle, coming back there. Off of Mapuna. Also another one of the unheralded players for the Virginia Cavaliers. Forrest got past Maryland 3-0. Number 13, a very good Michigan 3-1. And then the quarterfinals beat UC Santa Barbara in the Elite Eight. 
Virginia, 2-0 over Campbell. Very good team. Patton and Croft scoring, and that beats St. John's 3-0. Three dead balls. Uland and Uland the pair, and Bell. And then the quarters beat SMU in a very, very entertaining 3-2 match. In the box it comes. DK back defending. Chul, it's a two-on-one out here. Chul, to the end line. Has a chance to get it over. And out to the corner it goes. And the Wake fans beginning to come to life here, hoping that they can draw some blood here and get back into this game. Corner for Wake, Lava. You know, Lapa still. The Demon Deacons hoping to get him more involved in this there, second there, half. There. Showed it to him, didn't he? Let's go, let's go. Shields being pressed here by Donaciano. Junior from Roanoke, Virginia. DK. Goals for Daryl DK, 19th minute, 23rd minute, 2 0 Virginia. The Georgetown Hoyas. Exceptional performance here today with a 2 0 win over Stanford in the first semifinal. Sunday, 6th Eastern. For the national championship, they will take on the winner of this match between UVA and Wake Forest. Glenn, I'm not counting this game over by any means, but at some point in time, if you're Galnovich, you're going to have to start to address load management for these players. Now, there's 35 minutes left in this game, but you and I were just talking about it. Coming off of that Georgetown match, they used 20 players, and that's a squad that has 22 players that have double-digit appearances over the entire season. So at what point in time do you pull the trigger on that? Shields, good early ball. He got it out wide. He got it into space. Losing control was Eddie Folds because he had numbers in front of him. DK now. Going into the tackle, Michael DeShields timed it perfectly. The redshirt junior from Baltimore. Big matchup with DK today. Virginia. Early ball to Chul. And off he goes. He's eliminated the defender. Can Wake get something out of this? Switch a play. And coming back defensively, Brett Halsey. In his 21st appearance, helping to kill off the counterattack. I thought Mayfuna looked defeated on that one. He got turned around quite nicely by Joel. Joel's Bobby, starting to live up to it a little bit. Interestingly enough, Bobby Muse actually said that he was probably one of the most consistent attackers he's had the entire season. And that did not ring true in the first half, but he's starting to come into his own. And, you know, that balance that we talked about between he and Calvin Harris is becoming a bit more prevalent offensively now. Put it all together with a 10 lacking. Joel's coming to life here. He's got it back on his left foot. Oh, he doesn't make good contact. Created the space in the window to get a shot off. But the contact just not good enough. He's starting to win this one-on-one -on -one battle, most importantly. He's not afraid to cut inside. I'd still like to see another dimension added. 
Now that he's beat you twice on the end, he'll know that. Keep that in the back of your mind. Spin out, get down into the corner, and look for Kyle Holcomb. That's how they were able to take down the Michigan Wolverines. Yes, Getting a little nice push here now from Wake Forest. You heard it from Bobby Musa, our halftime talk with him. He said the space is there. We're just not going after it. And that's exactly what they're doing right now. Three-man move there, that final pass there from Ganassiano, way over there. Change is coming here. Big Force is going to make a move. And the balls will come off. Coming on for Wake Forest is number six, Justin Thomas. Keep an eye on this matchup now because that's a right-sided player, Justin Thomas, who's going to come all the way over. Thomas, a junior from Canada, started in the last game against UVA. And Alistair Johnson switching sides. He's going to the left now, and I like that one-two punch between he and Calvin Harris. Those guys like to play together. They read each other really well. Bobby Mews should look to see if he can stoke that fire a bit more on the far side because they've been lacking the left here in the second half. Jolo's gotten turned here. He's beginning to feel more confident. Nice entry pass there to Calvin Harris. He's fouled, does a good job of just holding it up there, Devin. Henry Kessler recognizes that he'd actually already been beaten, and this is a smart center back move. It's a professional foul where he takes him to ground. Wake Forest electing to play quick here. Would have liked to have seen this set their shape and put one into the box. <laughs> Tomorrow afternoon on ESPN, the ESPN app, we've got a great men's college basketball doubleheader for you. It starts with a bit of a rivalry between Penny Hardaway's 13th ranked Memphis Tigers and Rick Barnes' 19th ranked Tennessee Vols in Knoxville, 3 p.m. Eastern. Then John Calipari, number eight, Kentucky, hosting Georgia Tech at Rupp Arena in Lexington. Go on, Allie, go on, Allie. Now he got it again. Desart, the Shields. Johnston, Kessler, awkward clear there. We'll go out for a throw in here for Wake Forest. <laughs> These two teams, ridiculous defensively. Can see very few goals. DK beats one. Long stride, long touch. He's going to hold it up. Virginia, beautiful ball out wide here from Steedman. Solid tackle there from Justin Thomas. Who timed it perfectly on Axel Gunnarsson. It's actually the challenge before by Daniel Steven where he actually pulled him back. Really well done by the referee to allow the boys to play on and then bring it back when advantage doesn't take shape. Switch of play, Chul now. Now can Wake Forest get some support here for him? And two or three in and around the box. Chul tries to square it in. Pass is cut out by Kessler who read it beautifully. Freshman Ben Alcazar. Idea was right, execution wasn't there. Just overhead. Oh, 
Well, it's been the Daryl DK show. 19th minute, he lashes this in, Devin. Two strikes, four minutes. I still think that Pandenberg has to do better on the near post. This is one when you're shielding back over as a goalkeeper, you should get nine times out of ten. Unfortunately, that one ends up in the back of the net. And the tracking run here, he's so big, six foot two. Even when he drifts away from a goal, you got to put a body on him. And they just didn't. They get it wrong. He got it all right, and it was smooth sailing from then on out till the end of the first half. Johnston, the right now. He's gotten in the box, the heavy water there, gets across, and Kessler heads it straight up in the air. Euland now. Lapa, here's Lapa in that heavy water. Oh, it just goes across the face of that far post. Ball got stuck a little bit underneath him there in the heavy, soggy patch of that penalty area. They couldn't figure out what Georgetown was able to in the first matchup against Stanford. Look at just stuck up underneath his feet. Feels like there's going to be a back post run. Sometimes as an attacker, just put it in a danger area. He's trying to bring it back across the six in hopes that Chol on the backside is going to be able to finish it off. But again, they're starting to progress. You're feeling the fire coming out of Bobby Muse's boys. Holcomb goes down. Not going to get a call. And now Kessler's down. A yellow card to Holcomb, who's a frustrating night here. Very talented striker. Nine goals, 18th appearance for him, and he's only a sophomore. He uses a lot of that emotion. To his benefit, sometimes we saw that in the, the 16 and quarterfinal matchups against his opponents, where able to take people off of their games, and unfortunately for him tonight, that just hasn't been the case. And we're really proud of that young man for step up when some of the other guys went down. Aristotle Zaris was one of the big known names, and Bobby Muse said that just like he's still got a bit of progression to go in terms of development up top there. And you're seeing that tonight where when some of the other boys are maybe employing their games in a different manner, he's just not responding off of that. He's still stuck in the middle and hasn't found a way to combine with his guys out on the wings. DK. And the bull is way through. The shields will come over. It's Chol now. Holcomb. Skipped off him. Lapa now. Needs support. Offside flag is up on Calvin Harris. No call here from the referee, Soren Stoika. And coming away with it is Joe Bell now. And he'll get fouled. Bell has played at the under 17, under 20 uh, World Cup lever from New Zealand. Full national team, the orchestrator of this. Virginia machine. When you talk to me about 25, 30 minutes into the first half about Lapa and his lack of quickness in his decision making, you just saw it again. You've got a far run by Calvin Harris. You've got Chol on the other side. And he doesn't release either one of them. The road closes down. Even when they track back across, he can't let the ball go, and that window of opportunity closes. That's exactly what Bobby Muse said. He said, listen, we have the space to play with. We just aren't taking advantage of it. And again, another representation of where they get it wrong. Well, he's gifted with that wonderful change of direction, the ability to make plays. But Bobby Muse also tells us, he said, look, it's up to our big players to make plays in this NCAA College Cup weekend. No question. Ben Alcazar, that's a good ball to choke. Ben Alcazar is trying to do everything he can to ignite this team. Joel's cross goes over everybody. Shuttler's going to let it skip off the wet surface and out for the goal kick now as we tick down towards 23 minutes left here. Just like we saw in the Georgetown goal, watch this ball just sit up. 
as Chol knocks this all the way back across. It's actually a beautiful clearance by Cross away from danger, but look at it. Just sits up for Isaiah Parente, hoping to get a second chance opportunity. Well read by Shuttler on the back line as this comes through. Alistair Johnson trying to get involved, but again, the elements really coming into play here. Shuttler and Virginia working on shutout number 16. Still a lot of soccer to be played here in Cary, North Carolina. Glenn Davis, Devin Kerr, hope you're enjoying this second semifinal. Georgetown, the winner's in the first, awaiting the winner here. Been impressed by the freshman Nico Benalcazar from Wilton, Connecticut, the center back. Horton, Virginia. Michael DeShields has thrown his body around a little bit, especially with the boys up top we saw him do battle with DK a few times and it's another one of those matchups where you've got a pretty seasoned veteran into shields and a freshman in Ben Alcazar Ben Alcazar definitely getting the better play on that back line tonight Genial off the corner He's headed down off the turn and over the top falling away lashing at it was a talented Joe Bell Goes out for the goal kick. Coverage of the NCAA championship will continue this Sunday with the Men's College Cup final December 15th, 6 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU. For more information on the NCAA Men's College Cup, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. There are tremendous teams here in Cary, North Carolina. Four sets of wonderful coaches and leaders. And programs with tremendous history here. We've been uh, privileged to be able to call these matches. Lapa. 13th time Carey has, between the men and women's college cups, hosted, which is pretty remarkable. Of course, over the years we've seen men and women's national teams play here. The home of the North Carolina Courage in the NWSL. Also North Carolina FC of the USL. Saw so their coach Dave Sarakin here. The Courage coached by Paul Riley winning the NWSL title. Real soccer mecca, carry North Carolina. <laughs> Joe Bell. He just slows himself down, draws the free kick, and the clock continues to tick. There's Dave Sarakin, and uh, you see Bruce Arena there, the right of your screen, and he's uh, wearing those Virginia colors. A couple of the real leaders uh, in U.S. soccer history, both Bruce Arena and Dave Sarakin. He put a couple of those stars up on that jersey, didn't he? Something that, until you see it in person, all of the stars right across that crest, it's it's quite impressive, to be honest. So much history, and, you know, one of the programs that's been able to put a couple national championships back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back order. Three in a row under Bruce Arena. He is the one who really took the Virginia program in the early years to the new heights and set the thing in motion now, and his assistant took over and George Gelnovach, and it's all just kept on rolling. For me, with that program, it's, it's not just the success on the field. It's you have Dave Sarakin who worked under him. Obviously Bruce Arena started it. Bob Bradley in there. Gelnovash. The list goes on and on and on. The way that the coaching ties within this country have been affected by this collegiate institution is absolutely astounding in the most positive ways. It seems like every branch at every level in the United States Someone has had their hands in. Drop another one for you, Bob Jenkins, who was uh, one of the assistants for Bruce Arena. He also had the under-18 national team for the U.S. I'm sure we could come up with a few more. Johnny Harks, uh, head of the Greenville Triumph. He won a few, a few little runs back in the day with University of Virginia. I was just looking at Wake and remember Sonny and what a wonderful player he was uh, at that college cup back in Houston in 2016. Uh, Dave Sarakin and Bruce Arena here uh, professionally as well, looking for players, scouting players. 
other MLS teams are represented as well. Here's Wake to the end line, out at one, it's out for the goal kick. Wouldn't have mattered anyway, Lapa hit it. It was denied by Shuttler. But the time is beginning to be now for Wake Forest and the Demon Deacons. They are in dire need of a goal here. Will it come off the foot of Bruno Lapa? here by Bobby Muse as he's taken. Chola moved him to the far left side. Now Kyle Holcomb is still the true number nine up top, but coming inside next to Lapa is Calvin Harris as they brought Tater Renhek on to this right-hand side. And that's an interesting move because I thought the speed has actually been quite nice for them. And they started to create a nice ebb and flow both on the left and the right. And now that you bring him into the interior, you still have to find a way to find the feet of Chol, even if it's on the left-hand side, because he's been so good over here on the right. You would hate to start to steer away from that. They were finding a little bit of success and just outside of 15 minutes to go. Penny for a thought for Bobby Muse is once again coming in. Could they win the final one? And as of right now, it doesn't even look Andrew, like they're going to get the opportunity faster. to answer that question. This rain that you're seeing has not stopped. Testament to the two teams for the play they're trying to produce here tonight that's not a player you want to get injured in Nathaniel Cross because by the way he has five game winners for UVA to lead the team six goals three assists on the year for him from Sheffield England youth player at Sheffield United shattered him on a number of occasions here tonight. Lapa and Alcazar to Shields now. That's a bad foul from behind there. Crofts. And he will pick up a yellow card. This is a really bad challenge. A very bad challenge. You could send him off for that. Two-footed, scissored in behind. Nathaniel Crofts bringing a boatload of momentum in behind it as well. And I'm glad I'm not in the referee shoes because that's not a decision that you want to be put in. 15 minutes to go, national semifinal for, as you mentioned, one of the players that's had a massive impact, especially when University of Virginia has been looking for goals. Five game winners, and he definitely could have been sent off for that. Isaiah Pariente has jumped back up the sophomore from Medina, Ohio. Another excellent player. Donaciano. Crofts just picked up the yellow. It's a sliding tackle there, and a very important one. Joel now, trying to get out of three here. Just besieged by defenders. It's Virginia now. It's
Crofts, and coming out of the middle is Michael DeShields for Wake Forest. I'll give him credit defensively. When they took off Eddie Folds, they took Alistair Johnson, moved him to the left, brought Justin Thomas to the right. Justin Thomas has been spectacular. 45-yard run across the field to get stuck in and save this. That's the second time we've seen that tonight. Henry Kessler making friends with Kyle Holcomb. Holcomb's got to be careful. He's sitting on a yellow. He'll try and goat you in to a response. He gets a little bit out of Henry Kessler for that overextended arm. You have to be oh so careful. You've seen some glimpses out of Wake Forest here in the second half. If they want any chance, it obviously cannot be down to 10 men. And Alcazar, the aforementioned Justin Thomas to the Shields. Got to get it forward here. You're under 15 minutes left here. Thomas. Tunis. And, uh, and it will end up being a corner here for Wake Forest. So, with your entryway back into this game, your gateway be a corner here. Wake fans beginning to get riled up here. Bruno Lampa to take it. towards the spot. The Shields headed it, but it went straight down off the surface, up into the air, claimed by Colin Shuttler. Pit of gamesmanship on the tail end of it as well to waste some time in traffic. Michael DeShields trying to get that big head on it. Guess who? Joe Bell, right in front of him once again. That kid's having some kind of game tonight. Does Virginia look different to you without Daryl DK? Absolutely. You don't have that long ball presence anymore, do you? Notice they put the ball on the ground a bit more. It's it's right to left. And But to be fair, although you see some of the boys standing at halfway right now, we said, when were they going to start making some changes? Because now you're starting to prepare for the next match. You should close this out. If you don't, that's a whole other issue. But 15 minutes to go up, too. you got to take care of the boys that got you here. And that's one of the changes they've had to make. Yeah, DK is uh, about to re-enter the game here. To Shields. Still the Shields. It's maybe a shooting opportunity. It's parried wide by Shuttler. It didn't seem like it was hit that well by Holcomb, but in the end it was troubling, especially with the water in and around that goal mouth. Wake Forest is going to get another free kick. This ball had some English on it as well. This is really well done by Holcomb. Notice, just trying to put it on frame on that far post. He's the only one on the Wake Forest team that has recognized the danger area on that far side. Curling back to the back post. Fisted out and still loose and into the hands of Shuttler. asking more for his teammates because he feels like he's the only one making any effort. He's not that far off because as he steps, there's no coverage at the top of the 18 here. Everybody gets caught ball watching. They have worked too hard throughout this match to throw it away with just outside 10 minutes to go. Tater Renhack is on. Sports Center tonight after Clippers Timberwolves with Kenny Main and John Anderson. They'll have post game reactions plus LeBron back in Miami. The Lakers Lears, taking on the Heat. Our picks for the three title Number fights nine. at UFC Carol 245. PK. Sports Center after the NBA Number on ESPN PK. and the Axel ESPN Ferguson. app. Gunnarsson comes on. DK comes back on. Again, returning for Virginia. Philip Horton comes off. Here's DK. Two-handed push there, pretty obvious. No way! Yeah, yeah. Gonna be a free kick for Wake here. 11 minutes, 40 seconds left. The yellow card there for DK. You can see our referee pointing. He said one, two, three, four. Excessive infringement. 
is what caused the referee to go to his book on this one. It's not a terrible foul, but when you start to get four, five, six into the referee's mindset, that's when you get yourself into trouble. Yeah, it was just a bad touch, and not that I've ever been there before, you know. Probably could have just held him there and turned him back towards his own end line. He's going to stay up here. Lapa. The Shields. Of course, Wake led the nation in attendance at their home field, Spry Stadium. Here's Cho. Two players go down in this water. Can you come out of there with it? Still Cho, fighting his way through. We are going to the penalty spot. Drama unfolding here with 11 minutes and 8 seconds left. Perseverance. That's all this was about. Individual effort. Great 50-50 down in the corner. And how about that? Eulen gets beat. He comes in behind. This is 100% a penalty. Frustration coming off the line by Colin Shuttler. But a center back got it wrong. Now immediately, Lapa grabbed this ball. He had a penalty versus Michigan. He tucked it away in the bottom right corner of himself. That's the left goalkeeper side. You have to wonder if he's going to stick to tradition because we've seen that a few times this season. Bruno Lapa against Colin Shuttler. Lapa is three for four on penalty kicks this year. To bring Wake back. Lapa scores! It's two to one. The Demon Deacons are back in it. And we are in for an exciting 11 minutes left here in the second semifinal. As Wake getting a vital goal here, now down 2-1. to one. This isn't as good as the penalty he scored against the Wolverines. But this is where it starts, on that far side. They moved Toll over to the left, they brought Renhack to the right. Sometimes you just got to dig down deep, and that's what Choll does on the left. How about Lapa? Not one of his better penalties. Shuttler did the prep work. He knows where he's going, but he couldn't get off his line quick enough, and they draw within one. Virginia might have been complaining about a foul initially on Scholl down that left side. Agree or not? Disagree. And the water pops up off the ground. It made a bit of a, a mockery out of it, to be honest. The two guys just doing battle. It was really well done between he and Brett Halsey. And sometimes the ball's going to spin your way. It hasn't gone that way all night long for Wake Forest. But finally, a glimmer of hope has started to poke its head out. Omar Hernandez now, another skilled player has come on. DK. Shoulders off a defender. DK gets a blast off, goes through the six yard box. Nobody could get on the end of it. His 10th of the season in the PK spot in the 79th minute. Then Alcazar. Isaiah Pariente switches it. Here's the Shields now for Wake Forest. Lapa. Control was on there. That ball was delivered. Again, a threatening moment there. DK to a streaking Donaciano. Read like a book by Newland on the turn there from Calvin Harris. Mariente. Impressive player. Hernandez. Knocks it into that heavy, soggy area. Here is Wake Forest. They got bodies in the box. Cross gets slowed down by the thick, heavy ground. Threatening moment there for Alistair Johnston, though. I like this shape a lot better from Wake Forest. They've changed it, and they've gone with one sitting midfielder and Isaiah Parente in the middle of the field, three in front, and then two boys up top now. Keep an eye on Calvin Harris. He's tracking back enough to help defensively, but still stretch the game once they progress into the final third. Axel Gunnarsson. 
He's drawn two. It's good. So now he's got his head up to Joe Bell. It's who you want on the ball in these important moments. Nice switch of play. Virginia now has got four in and around the box. Now five. Cross comes in. DK went down in a heap there. Justin Thomas, under nine minutes left. Right as I say that, Calvin Harris limping on the far side, actually making his way over towards the bench with Bobby Muse, and that's the man right there who's gotten him back in this. Choke, choke. Lapa, call for the foul. this for Wake Forest just as you feel like the tides are turning their playmaker Calvin Harris goes down on one side Alistair Johnson has a trainer with him as well he was just on the ground and you could hear direction from the sideline Dan Brenner Steve Armas their assistant coaches were imploring him to go down trying to save the clock and maybe have a chat with one of their substitutes down in the corner to just grab a little bit of time here get some fresh legs and see if he, either a he can continue on or B Bring another substitute on and see if you can go after this thing. I mean, you still got time in. Look at Alistair Johnson. Trevor, keep going, Trevor. Keep going, Alistair. you got to step up. 13, 22. We score the second. Run over here. Two of them. Under eight minutes left. Virginia with a two to one lead over Wake. Rona has come on for Harris. Steedman has done a good job to help win it back for Virginia. Donaciano. Afomafuna. Donaciano now is coming to life in the vital moments here. He's brought down. Free kick, Virginia. Miracosi, Donaciano, nice little spell there to help Virginia move up the field here. Don't always see Parente make mistakes like this in such close proximity to his net. But he was beaten and understood maybe this was a better look. Still goes to ground and, you know, he had reinforcements. He didn't have to foul. Bell, well, dangerous ball, just went over the head. A couple of targets moving diagonally through the box in front of goalkeeper Andrew Pannenberg. Glenn, the key thing to remember right now with six and a half minutes to go is they can still play. You don't have to go direct and knock the long ball. Put it on the deck and knock it around. Napa, Kessler with the lateral cover here. So Benella. And Alcazar uh, step away from DK and then quickly get in front of him. And that's what a center back's got to do against him. You don't want to body up against him. You got to step away from him and then try and nip in front at the right time. I think if you're going to be physical with DK, uh, you're probably going to come out on the short end of things. Sure. Under six minutes left here in Cary, North Carolina. Bobby Muse looking up. Let's 
statement. Gunnarsson. Still Gunnarsson. Gets brought down, advantage is played. DK was the target, tucking in there was Johnston to cut the pass out. You like the choices and decisions being made by Virginia right now? I did up until Gunnarsson just got whacked. I thought the referee should have blown a foul, to be honest, but he did well to hold up the ball. It's a nice 1v1 versus the two coming off, and look again. You're inside of five minutes right now. They played it over. You're going to get another 15, 20 seconds right now. I'd still like to see DK get more involved. You brought him back on for a reason. Try and play off of that. Calvin Harris has come back on for Rona. So he's going to give it a go uh, for about four minutes here to try and help Wake Forest find an equalizer. The freshman from Middlesbrough, England. That's what I'm talking about. You got to find a way to win that ball. Go up, use that body to your advantage. But again, Justin Thomas just continuously winning these one on one battles to keep his team in it. Big switch and wide open here is Omar Hernandez. Hernandez. Not going to get a call there, out for the goal kick. But you got a skilled one-on-one -on -one player isolated there in the box. Against the outside back for University of Virginia that struggled a little bit, to be honest. I tell you, I don't see a lot of ball on that. And there's not necessarily enough force. You see him go to ground, but that's going to have to be something special for the referee to point to the spot, and I just don't see it at all. Uh, not a big reaction either from Omar Hernandez. Under three minutes. Shuttler off the goal kick. It's got to be a Wake Forest ball, it is. Now you go direct. I said you had the luxury of playing about four minutes ago. That is quickly being pushed to the wayside. Looked like a good entry ball there in the Lapa, but water slowed it down. The shields will go back. Pannenberg now. Demon Deacon's got to get it forward here, Virginia. Trying to see out this 2-1 to one win. Thomas. Harris towards the corner flag. It's a wonderful ball. Calvin Harris. Into the box, the header from Shaw! Pushed away by Shuttler. Oh, what a moment here. A minute and 45 seconds left. Afame Funa lost his cleat on this as well. Still continues to play on and Chol, the one who has pushed his boys back into this match. Thinks he has the tire in the bottom corner. Shuttler's got other ideas. Shuttler made a very similar save like that against SMU. Box is loaded up here. Wake Forest pushing Virginia to the brink here. Bending ball. Bell will head it out. Calvin Harris. Pressed by Cross. Justin Thomas now for Wake. Short. There's led a resurgence here in the second half for Wake Forest. Johnston. Short. He's got space inside the box. Squares it back. And picked off. The cross is cut out by Colin Shuttler. This young man hasn't had a massive amount of work to do all night long, but very active here in the second half. And watch the, the framing of the ball. This is really well done. Perfect form. It would be easy with all the elements for him to spill this out and give up a rebound, but he's able to collect and go the other way. And the 
fact that it was simply clean handling, huge. Tons of bodies in and around him. Well, Wake Forest is gonna say that this effort is needed from the opening whistle here tonight. They're continuing to press here. 25 seconds left. Virginia trying to kill this off. DK now. He gets chopped down. It's going to be a free kick now for the Cavaliers. And that just may do it here. 10 seconds left. The Cavaliers are going to advance to the national championship on Sunday against Georgetown after a valiant push from Wake Forest. It felt like maybe at the tail end of this thing, Glenn, that Wake Forest had a few tricks in the bag left, but unfortunately it was just too little too late. University of Virginia, definitely the better team on the day, though some dramatics at the tail end of it came down to individual efforts for Wake Forest and the team effort just lacking. you got to feel for the seniors and the guys who put in all that effort with about 20 minutes to go. But you start slow, you get put yourselves in situations like this, and, and credit to the Cavaliers who move on. The two goals from Daryl DK in the 19th and 23rd hold up. For Wake Forest, it was Bruno Lapa from the penalty spot.